Okay, let's get in positions, everyone. Camera one into a fast Two second three. Camera one, track left. Open oh, Watch your focus, Kids 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 We're on the air. Kids wanna know. I'm Chris Eddy at Travis Air Force Base in California. Today it's home to the United States Air Force's Thunderbirds, precision flying team that can do things with their jets that you will not believe. That's Captain Buck Rogers of the Thunderbirds, a precision flying team for the U.S. Air Force. He rips through skies at speeds almost the speed of sound. Well, I can think it's 35 of the most intense minutes of your life. And their life is put on the line every time they go in the air. But they're not crazy. We don't think of ourselves at all as daredevils or stunt pilots or doing anything. Uh, sincerely, I got to tell you that if it scared me in the least bit, I wouldn't be doing it. There's, you know, no degree of fear at all. The Thunderbirds have been around for a long time. 41 years this year. It's our 41st year, believe it or not. 1953 was the first year, and uh, they've never, they've had a nonstop uh, season ever since. And every few years, new pilots challenge for the right to be one of the new Thunderbirds. But there's only room for six, two solo flyers and a team of four fighters. You have to compete for that, and there are obviously a lot more people who would like to do it than we can allow to do it, so it's a, it's a competitive kind of a process. And, uh, you know, uh, I'd say probably 75 applications come in every year for two or three slots. That kind of puts it in perspective. You know, we don't think of ourselves as being, uh, you know, prestigious kind of guys. We're just average, normal kind of guys who maybe do some hard work and uh, good luck and good timing, got in the right place at the right time, and we're able to get on this team. Once they're on the team, the work has just begun. They don't do dangerous maneuvers the first time they go up together. For example, when we start all this stuff out, we don't start it uh, low to the ground. Uh, we start out very high, several thousand feet above the ground, and as we get better at it, we get lower to the ground or we add more people to the formations, and we get the formations a lot tighter. This is called the F-16 Jet Fighter, otherwise known as the Fighting Falcon, and this is the jet that they use when they're doing all the maneuvers. They're going to do about 30 of those maneuvers during the show today, and at one point, they're going to get as close as 18 inches. That's about the closest we'll ever get, and... Uh, That's amazing for me. Well, it is. It's amazing. It's very close, but again, very controlled circumstances, very, you know, after a high degree of proficiency, you guys don't go out and do that the first time. They practice for months to be able to do, you know, get that close without uh, swapping a little paint. But like any job, they remember safety always has to come first. We're, we're very safe, uh, safety conscious about how we approach things. And uh, true, we don't have, a, you know, safety harnesses per se, but, uh, you know, we're not getting down there low altitude doing things until everyone who's involved is very ready. You ever get afraid? Uh, not a bit. In fact, since we're on the subject of safety, let me tell you that, you know, uh, we're doing things with very, uh, you know, precise uh, conditions in mind. Uh, we have a show line that is, is designed so, so that if something did go wrong uh, and we had to get out of that airplane, no one watching is going to, you know, get hurt in the least bit. And in fact, in 41 years, no one has ever been hurt watching one of our air shows. So, you know, uh, I've got a vested interest because, uh, you know, I, I want to stay alive and, of course, uh, we do everything we do with the same interest for the crowd, you know. We don't want anybody to get hurt and uh, we want everyone to come out and have a good good time and we want to show them a good show, but we want it to be safe and, and both are easily doable at the same time. The one thing that's different, uh, such as aside a little bit, is that you have to be a fighter pilot. There are a lot of great pilots who, who don't fly fighters who uh, can't do this job because, you know, we require a guy to have fighter time. As a matter of fact, a minimum of a thousand hours of fighter time. But there are literally thousands of fighter pilots in the Air Force, and just about any one of them can come fill our shoes just fine. In case you were wondering, there is a purpose for all the high-speed flybys and acrobatic maneuvers. Thunderbirds have several missions. Uh, our biggest one is recruiting. You know, we go out and we go to a lot of places where there's not an Air Force base, where people don't get a chance to see their Air Force, and uh, we go out and show them, hey, look, you know, your tax dollars are, you know, being spent well. We we uh, fly great airplanes and look what you know guys like me can do and and it sparks the interest in a lot of people who don't get a chance to ever see the air force otherwise and when they do uh, like you saw today we enlisted a bunch of young folks uh, when they go through basic training they do a survey and they say what made you decide to join the air force and a tremendous amount of them and as a matter of fact about 85 percent of them say hey i saw the thunderbirds and it got my uh, curiosity peaked and you know and i looked into it and here i am and they must have had a big influence on these recruits because today they're going to be sworn in to the United States Air Force. I state your name. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. Support the fan. Support the fan. Kids wanted to be a pilot. They decided they wanted to go into the Air Force. What kind of things should they emphasize in schooling, you know, to, to become a pilot? 
Well, you could study almost anything you want and get into aviation later. Uh, it probably wouldn't hurt you to have a good degree or a good uh, a bit of math in your background, but it's really not essential. I went through pilot training with a guy who was an English major, another guy who was a music major. Uh, so I mean, you can really study anything you want and get into flying later on. Uh, for the Air Force, at least, the big thing is you have to have a four-year degree from the college of your choice. So you can study whatever you want and uh, you know, uh, just have good grades, work hard, and, uh, and you'll do fine. Captain Rogers and the rest of the team put their lives in each other's hands every time they race through the sky. So they have to put a lot of trust in each other. We are like a one big family. You know, we, we travel together, we sleep, sleep in the same hotels, we eat at the same places and go to the same receptions and ceremonies and banquets and, uh, you know, schools, hospitals, anybody will have us. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty powered up. Not powered up enough to go the speed of sound. No, we can't do that because uh, if you go the speed of sound, you're going to have a shock wave and uh, a uh, sonic boom, per se, and uh, you're going to break a lot of glass. So, we don't do that during shows. And during the show, you're not the only one that gets thrills and chills. I'd say you get a kind of exhilaration when you get low to the ground, particularly at unusual attitudes like when you're rolling or when you're inverted. Uh, there's a, uh, you can definitely sense the speed and it's pretty exhilarating, but I'd describe it more as a feeling of intensity, you know, when you're, when you're uh, cramming in there, a lot of airplanes in a tight space, uh, rolling them and putting G's on them and being low to the ground, uh, you know, you have to concentrate very hard, so I like to think it's 35 of the most intense minutes of your life. So join me in wishing Captain Buck Rogers and the rest of the Thunderbirds many safe and exciting trips soaring towards space.